Today we're going to retread your favourite ground by diving back into Victorian crime. In particular this week, a proper brutal murder. In July 1879, Catherine Webster was hanged at Wandsworth Prison for the shocking murder of Julia Martha Thomas. It is a crime that raised a lot of questions, both then and now. Possibly the most striking of these questions is, what the hell has this to do with David Attenborough? But we'll get to that. Julia Thomas was a retired school teacher who had lived alone since 1873 after the death of her second husband. At the trial, she was described by her doctor as a smart, well-dressed lady of 54 years old. In terms of middle-class assets, she kept a charming, semi-detached house at two Mayfield Cottages, Richmond, in southwest London, and I'm sure you'll agree it is a remarkably pleasant house. She wasn't wealthy, but like many people of her status, she very much liked to appear higher in the social pecking order than she actually was. She would dress up and wore plenty of jewellery to give the impression of a greater level of prosperity than she had. But to really seal her status, there was something missing. She needed a domestic servant. Now, the trouble was that she had real difficulty finding and keeping a good servant. First of all, a good servant wants to be serving further up the food chain than a lower middle class retiree with delusions of grandeur. And secondly, by all accounts, she was widely known as a harsh employer who had only managed to keep one maid for any sensible length of time. Basically, anyone with a half decent set of references was not going to come anywhere near Julia Thomas. Then, on the 29th of July, 1879, she took on Kate Webster. Webster was someone who really did not have a half decent string of references. What she did have, however, was a rather impressive list of convictions. Webster, born Kate Lawler in 1849, had served time in Wandsworth Prison for larceny in 1864, which made her 15 years old at the time of her first sentence. In 1868, she was sentenced to four years penal servitude for further robberies. She was sentenced again, having been convicted of 36 counts of larceny in 1875. And then within six months of release, she was back in Wandsworth again for similar crimes. In January of 1879, Webster had stood in as a charwoman when her friend Sarah Creese was ill. And based on this short stint of work, she was recommended to Mrs Thomas. She was employed immediately, without a single check into her background or character. Now, as is quite predictable for somebody with Webster's background, her work was appalling and her work ethic even worse. Further to this, Mrs. Thomas was open with her criticisms. These criticisms were not unfounded by any stretch, but it seems to bear all the hallmarks of somebody who was thoroughly unsuited to having employees. The relationship between the two women deteriorated rapidly. Webster later described their relationship she said, at first I thought her a nice old lady, but I found her very trying and she used to do many things to annoy me during my work. When I had finished my work in my room, she used to go over it again after me and point out places where she said I did not clean, showing evidence of a nasty spirit towards me. Webster was dismissed without references on the 28th of February 1879. She'd lasted just under one month. However, she managed to convince Mrs. Thomas to keep her on for a further three days. But when she staggered back in from an alehouse, making Mrs. Thomas late for church, there was a confrontation. A confrontation which had fatal consequences for both women. Webster described it in her eventual confession. Mrs. Thomas came in and went upstairs. I went up after her and we had an argument, which ripened into a quarrel. And in the height of my anger and rage, I threw her from the top of the stairs to the ground floor. She had a heavy fall and I became agitated at what had occurred, lost all control of myself. And to prevent her screaming and getting me into trouble, I caught her by the throat. And in the struggle, she was choked. And I threw her on the floor. If that wasn't graphic enough, then she goes on to describe how she dismembered the body, boiled it in a wash copper, somewhat similar to this one and burnt the bones in the hearth, 
I apologise if you've recently eaten. I determined to do away with the body as best I could. I chopped the head from the body with the assistance of a razor which I used to cut through the flesh afterwards. I also used the meat saw and the carving knife to cut the body up with. I prepared the copper with water to boil the body to prevent identity and as soon as I had succeeded in cutting it up I placed it in the copper and boiled it. I opened the stomach with a carving knife and burned up as much of the parts as I could. Yeah. Since Mrs Thomas was rarely seen and Webster was often seen cleaning, nothing really looked out of the ordinary. After all, have you ever taken a really good look at what your neighbours are doing? She continued posing as Mrs Thomas whenever anyone came to the house for orders or deliveries and meanwhile she was getting the remains into a Gladstone bag and a hat box. But she was unable to get the head in the box and so that was buried in the stables of the pub next door. The rest of the remains were dropped from Richmond Bridge into the Thames, apart from one foot which she could also not fit in there. That was thrown onto a rubbish heap in Twickenham. She continued this charade for another two weeks, arranging for the furniture to be sold to, for a reasonable sum to a publican called John Church. But by the time this sale was due to complete, she had been rumbled. The body parts had been found, her cover blown, and she fled immediately to Liverpool, then back to her home county of Ireland. She was arrested at her uncle's farm in Kilana on the 29th of March, 1879. The case shocked the nation. It's a sign of the great public interest in this case that the prosecution was led by the Solicitor General himself, Sir Harding Gifford. The trial took six days of Webster trying to implicate as many other people as possible, including John Church and some of her former neighbours, all of whom had solid alibis, and this did nothing to improve her lot in the eyes of the public. Finally, a local bonnet maker testified that Webster had told her that she had come into property a week before the murder. This was taken as premeditation and motive and the jury unanimously convicted her. She was sentenced to hang but claimed she was pregnant in order to avoid the gallows. Unsure where to go from here, the court came forward with a jury of matrons, which was an archaic practice but still legally valid, and they determined she wasn't. She made a full confession to her crimes and was hanged at Wandsworth Prison on the 29th of July 1879 by William Marwood. She was the only woman ever hanged at Wandsworth. And if you're interested, you can stand on the trapdoor she stood on, the Nottingham Museum of Justice. The trial and execution was a sensation, even before the trial Madame Tussauds had a Richmond murderess display. The Illustrated Police News even put out a souvenir edition covering the crime. Webster had struck at the very core of the Victorian middle class identity. By impersonating one of them for the best part of two weeks, it highlighted that being middle class in Victorian London was down to looking the part and having the right things, whether they were earned or not. That there was no visible difference between the respectable school teacher and an Irish thug with 40 plus convictions. Quite the reverse of hard work and good character reputation that they liked to imply. Also, it showed that the middle classes were not safe in their own homes, not safe from their own servants. And that's going to send shockwaves through society, especially amongst those people who are looking at employing a first time charwoman without references. But what, I hear you all cry, what has this to do with David Attenborough? Well. In 1952, David Attenborough bought the house next door, which stood between the murder house and the pub. The pub ceased trading in 2007, and Sir David bought that as well, with a view to redeveloping the site. On 22nd of October 2010, workmen uncovered the skull of Julia Thomas, buried there 113 years previously. The skull the only missing piece of the body was buried in Richmond Cemetery on the 24th of August 2011. So, thank you very much for watching. If you want other Victorian crime stories, check out our Victorian playlist. In the meantime, 
don't have nightmares. Bye-bye.